Rise and Grind DMV, happy Saturday. We are waking up to mostly cloudy skies across the area, but we are tracking showers and storms as we head through the second half of your day today. So keep it here. We'll talk more about that in that eight day forecast. And this morning on DC News Now, early voting now underway in the Commonwealth, the new protections for poll workers and a gas explosion at an apartment building in the district, how locals are now recovering. Plus, one of the most anticipated events of the year happening today. We're talking about A Street Festival. The details are coming up. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, it is 8 o'clock on this Saturday. Good morning to you. Thank you for starting your day with us here on DC News Now. I'm Tosif Akile. Let's head on outside and give you a live look of what today is looking at at this moment. Looks like the sun is about to peak out. It is a beautiful start to your day. Looks like some clouds may be hanging around for a while. But how does the rest of your day look? Well, weather forecaster Brittany Ward joining me right here on the desk. Good morning to you, Brittany. Good morning, Tosin. All right, Brittany, I can see some clouds <clears throat> in that live shot. Is that what we can expect for the rest of the day? Yeah, we're going to be holding on to mostly cloudy conditions out there. You saw the sun trying to peak out, but overall, mostly cloudy skies will be the trend. We're also going to be tracking a few spotty showers and storms as we head through the second half of your Saturday. So stepping out the door right now, notice we are seeing those dry conditions up and down the mid Atlantic, but further off to the west out towards Ohio. Notice you are seeing that storm system work its way through that area. That cold front will be moving through and that's going to be sparking up those showers and storms as we head through your day today. Now temperature wise not looking bad stepping out the door. We're holding on to the 60s and a few locations in the 50s, 69 currently in DC, 68 as you head over there to Lexington Park, 63 in Hagerstown. Then we're talking 50s as you head over there to Luray, Woodstock, as well as Cumberland. Now, not only are we dealing with those warm temperatures, but it's a bit muggy as you are heading out, especially along the beltway. We're seeing those dew point temperatures in the 50s. We're tracking, uh, or excuse me, 60s. We're tracking 50s, though, as you head further off to the west. And overall, we'll be holding on to those muggy conditions as we head through the rest of your day today. So keep it here. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up. All right, Brittany, thank you. We'll check in with you in just a bit. 802 and new this morning. DC police are investigating two separate overnight incidents. The first was a shooting that happened at about 11 p.m. on Qual Street in Northeast. No word on a suspect or victim in the shooting. The second incident was a stabbing on New York Avenue in Northwest. That happened at about midnight. Police on the lookout there for a man wearing all red. If you have any information about either of these incidents, you're asked to contact police. your local election headquarters on the first day of early voting thousands of Virginians already made their way to the polls casting their ballot in the 2024 election in Arlington County. This would be the second presidential election with extra protections in place for voters and poll workers. It's an effort spearheaded by Arlington County Commonwealth's attorney and officials say poll workers protections aren't necessarily a response to nationwide warnings of threats against poll workers. Our Max Marcilla has the details on those protections and the first day of early voting. Day one of early voting in Arlington was smooth, safe, and one of pride for the many people wearing their I Voted stickers on their way out. If I don't do it and you don't do it, then who's going to do it? But keeping the system running this way takes a village. We are proactive in ensuring that their voting rights are protected. Arlington County Commonwealth's attorney, Parissa Dagani Tafty, just revealed her team's plan. It includes establishing the Election Protection Task Force to investigate allegations of voter intimidation, interference, or fraud, plus poll worker training, voter education, and an increase in prosecutors working on election day. If we're doing it right, voters should not notice that this is happening. Yeah, I'm totally supportive just because I think the more confidence we have in our electoral system, the more people will come out and vote. The plan put in place by Dagani Tafti popular among first day voters. We have to get this process completed efficiently and effectively. But to have intimidation, it just doesn't feel American to me. Though Jessica Jordan did say it hurts her heart to know threats can and have happened at voting locations across the country. You'll get people who feel intimidated and that's the opposite of what we want. You want I feel like voting should be an exciting day for everybody. 
Dagani Tafti tells Max Marcilla that there have not been any reported threats against poll workers or reports of voter intimidation in that county. Now in Virginia, threats against poll workers is a class one misdemeanor, which could mean up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $2,500. And staying in Virginia, Naresh Bhatt will remain behind bars. The Manassas Park man accused of killing and hiding his wife's body has been denied bond again. Prosecutors accused Naresh of killing his wife, Mamta Kafle Bhatt. Prosecutors say he dismembered her body, put it in bags, and disposed of it across northern Virginia. Supporters of the missing mother held a rally for her after her husband's court appearance. They're calling for prosecutors to charge him with aggravated murder and make sure Naresh is kept away from their daughter. It's been stated into evidence that she was murdered, dismembered, and disposed of like garbage. And I have news for you. She's not garbage. Naresh Bot's trial is set for December 9th. As of now, his wife's body has not been found. She's been missing since late July. A Virginia fugitive wanted for a cold case murder now now behind bars, and that's how the arrest was made. Timothy Hickerson is accused of second degree murder and burglary in the death of Shane Donahue. Donahue went missing in 2010 in Noakesville, an hour southwest of D.C. Timothy Hickerson in this video was arrested during a traffic stop in Flagler County, Florida, north of Daytona Beach. Donahue's body has never been found and authorities believe he's dead. 806, a 15 year old has been arrested for allegedly making social media threats against DC schools. DC police say he made an Instagram post showing pictures of weapons and a list of DC schools. Police say the teen is from Brandywine, Maryland and found the picture of those weapons online. Police say he does not actually have any guns. And in Montgomery County, police have arrested a man in connection to the homicide investigation of an 18 year old woman. Police say Gorba Santino is charged with the murder of Denia Cruz Meja. Cruz Meja was found inside her home in Montgomery Village Wednesday. Santino faces a first degree murder charge. He's being held without bond. In Prince George's County, a Capitol Heights family escaped a house fire. The house fire happened at a townhome on Adeline Way yesterday. Investigators say that fire started in the basement. There were no injuries to the family of four. We're very thankful that they were able to get out okay and no one was hurt, no one's injured, so we're very thankful for that. You know, things can, come, can be replaced mm -hmm. and things can come and go, but we're just thankful that their, their lives were spared, everyone's in good health, everybody Absolutely. walked out on their own. Officials say the Red Cross is helping the family. The investigation into what caused that fire continues. All right, we are coming up on 808 and happening today. 150,000 people, I will be one of them, expected to gather along the 8th Street corridor in Northeast D.C. It's the 19th year of the popular 8th Street Festival. D.C. News Now's Daniel Hamburg spoke to local businesses about the economic impact of this event. There's one way to sum up the night before the 8th Street Festival. So exciting. A mile and a half of entertainment, art, and food. The whole point of the festival is to showcase our local businesses because this is a very unique and eclectic corridor. Tens of thousands of people means big business for these small businesses. Dumpling Hot Pot Beyond has been open for a little more than a year, but this will be their first time participating in the festival. I want to let the people know our food, our restaurant and our our food is uh, classic Chinese food. Owner Ike G is excited to sell his dumplings outside and his hot pot inside. I hope more customers come in. A few doors down, Sticky Rice and owner Jason Martin have been participating for 17 years. 150,000 people, people who may have not ever come down the corridor or also neighbors who come all the time. He's among more than 35 businesses on the corridor taking part. It brings in so much more business than any other day of the, of the year. At 13 blocks long, organizers say it's not just helpful for businesses, but a full day of fun for everyone. We have something for everyone at this festival, from the kids to the seniors to adults, for those who want to have fun and dance. We have something for everyone here. About H Street, you're encouraged to take Metro to Union Station and Capital Bike Share will be valeting your bikes from noon to seven. And a lot of DC News Now team members will be there, including Miss Brittany Ward and myself. Hi. So you should <laughs> definitely come by H Street to have some fun, eat, but also come say hi to us. And I want to say, what are you most looking forward to? Food. Food. Yeah. Food. That was going to be my. That 
dumplings and whatever that was that definitely food, making a stop yeah, there. This food's going to be great. And I will say this. Last year, I'm not sure if our tent is the same place. I think we were right across the street from Ben's Chili Bowl last year. That? And we were right next to the stage. Corey and Sharice, man, they put on a, <laughs> a show. show. I saw that. I saw the video of that. I lost and my I'm, voice. Yeah, I'm, I really, I'm excited. I, I couldn't work. make it last <laughs> year, but I am super pumped to yeah. be there this year. So, so Brittany, know, I brought shorts and jeans. Yeah, that sounds What else right. do I need? Um, so if you plan on staying out late, then I would suggest bringing an umbrella. But if you just plan on being out during the afternoon, it's going to be warm and it's also going to be mostly cloudy out there. So keep that in mind. By the way, full disclosure, Tosin and I are going. We're going to have a lot of fun. So if you watch tomorrow and I don't have a voice, that's why those <laughs> temperatures, though, as we head through that nine o'clock hour, expected to be in the upper 60s, lower 70s, though, as we head right around lunchtime. And then it looks like as we head through that five o'clock hour, we're seeing those temperatures in the lower 80s, and those showers and storms will arrive in the district right around six o'clock. So keep it here. We'll have a full breakdown of this forecast coming up.